In simple terms, the word graffiti refers to writing or scribblings, paintings on walls, and any kind of surface found in strategic places in order to receive attention. This form of art has been around since prehistoric times. In the modern era, it is commonly found displayed in cities around the globe. Doing graffiti definitely is important. Some people don't have that, uh, they don't have that gallery, or they don't have an art class, or they don't have a, a teacher, or a brother or sister to show them. And maybe they just have like a friend that's like, hey, we're gonna go do graffiti in the street. You can put your name up. People will see it. They'll give you respect because they see you. Some people don't have any respect at home. So it's a way to earn, to gain a community, gain friends, gain respect. There's a way to express yourself and share colors, put colors on the street where maybe this is a gray, ugly wall. I've always said an empty wall does not inspire, you know? A wall with colors, a wall with any kind of form of art will inspire somehow. When did you realize you wanted to be an artist? One day, my mother gave me some markers. I think I was maybe like three or four years old. I really got into like drawing, like copying comic books, but I never felt like I was a good drawer. I got into photography, and photography really opened up my eyes to being to, just with the lens. Then my artistic created creations started come out, coming out with graffiti, and I started kind of pushing myself. And, <clears throat> and here I am now with this kind of indigenous style that like, I kind of came up on my own and using my ancestors to kind of guide me. Um, and I feel like, I feel like, um, uh, every day I'm learning to create with what I feel inside. Federico Fromm is known for being a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary artist. He holds a degree in art and audiovisual technology from George Mason University. His craft has been showcased at the Smithsonian here in Washington, D.C., as well as in New York at the New Museum of Contemporary Art. His murals can be found across the globe in countries like Mexico and Afghanistan. Before the pandemic, he often traveled around the world teaching in workshops and spreading the message of Maz Paz, or more peace, a phrase he adopted as a pseudonym while highlighting his indigenous roots. Lately, I've kind of been saying my artwork is all about honoring Earth, honoring Pachamama, honoring La Madre Tierra, you know, Mother Earth you know, the land we walk on, the air we breathe. I mean, it's so sacred. Originally, Native people were on this land. So I'm very inspired by indigenous art, Incan art, pre-Columbian art, uh, Native art, Inuit art, African art, but like the, the, the indigenous forms. I'm very connected to, to that line work, those bold shapes, the honoring of sacred ancestors, it's like the eagles, the animals, the sacred plants, and so much that's going on to at this very moment, you know, of like uh, saving the rainforest and saving uh, the bugs, the longhorned sheep. Like, I mean, there's, we're, we're just all together on this earth and just trying to uh, share that, that that beauty and the importance of just like knowing that you're drinking water right now and like we may not have water in 10 years, you know, like this is a sacred thing. So let's be conscious of what, what can we do to protect our water? You know, what can we do to protect uh, the workers that are out there bringing our food, you know? Um, so it's a big com conversation, but I try to bring those ideas and those topics into my artwork. Talk to us about what we're looking at here. It's more just kind of like an indigenous face. Uh, could be maybe a shaman, uh, could be like a medicine lady. Um, within kind of the jungle, leaves, some like, like sacred plants, uh, and almost kind of like a necklace type thing going on down here. 
There's everything a canvas. Art is everywhere, you know? The shirt you're wearing, your haircut, uh, the tattoos I have, the necklace I have, the way that this building has been designed by an architect. <clears throat> Art is everywhere. During COVID, I just wanted to kind of like, just get ideas out and just like, who cares? And just get it out on paper or on anything. And um, what's fun about this is I can cut this out and then go weed paste it or kind of like stick it on a wall in the street with a kind of a wheat paste, with like a glue. It's kind of like you can stick stuff to walls, you know? Um, so it's kind of a very versatile way for me to practice. This is very kind of basic and simple, but to kind of get an idea of like my style is just the simplicity of making art. You can do it anywhere. Street tagging has historically been linked to vandalism, but this is changing. Over the years, these murals have become a symbol of a different set of beliefs and human emotions. A recent example would be the Black Lives Matter movement. Washington, D.C., in its entirety, was one of the numerous U.S. cities that served as a canvas for social inclusion messages. So many people see it and viewed it as vandalism, but it's an expression in art. I kind of think it's equal parts art and rebellion. I mean, that's kind of together as is the combination, isn't it? The combination is huge. It is uh, so much. Graffiti is like, oh my gosh, machismo, it's art. It's, um, it's uh, going against uh, advertisement. It's going against the system. It's, it's putting free art in a community that may not have it. It's as beautifying, you know, it's inspiring. <clears throat> Um, so I moved to New York right after I got out of college. I went to George Mason University, and I moved to New York with my friend to Brooklyn, to Bushwick. I pretty much started selling t-shirts on the street. And, um, and with the t-shirts, it kind of it was a lot of work, just having different sizes and stuff. And so that kind of put me into the graffiti, back into this graffiti uh, element. Uh, I worked in this graffiti gallery called 100B, on 100B Forsyth Street, right in like Chinatown, um, Lower East Side. And I just really got in, in like thrown into the graffiti world and like met all kinds of graffiti writers from New York. I would paint in Brooklyn, a little bit in Queens, and Manhattan, and the Bronx. Like you say, it's expressionism, it's uh, releasing. Um, it's just, it was almost for me just to like, prove, can I do this? Can I climb up these, up these like two story of fences to get onto a rooftop? Like, can I do that? And um, I mean, it was pretty scary sometimes, you know? And I got bagged up, I got arrested like twice from the graffiti. Um, but it taught me so much. There's a lot to drive you and make you better, you know? So, um, so yeah, the graffiti in New York, taught me was like the, the first steps to like painting walls. What is it like having those run-ins with the law? You know, your art is, as I said, in a sense, rebellion. It shows you the system that we live in, you know? When I got arrested, <clears throat> I went to Central Bookings in Brooklyn, and you see what kind of system uh, it is controlling this world, and you see people shackled up you know, going to jail, going like upstate, going far, who knows, going down south. You know, you see rats running around, you see people held like slaves, you know, like prisoners in horrible conditions. Um, so I, I tell everybody, you should get arrested. Get arrested and you see what kind of system we live in. When I was in New York, there was a lot of uh, racial profiling, just stop and frisk, you know? There's a lot of that going on. And, um, and being part of, like, learning about that really helped me realize more about just the injustices of the system that we live in. Can you talk a little bit about the evolution of respect when it comes to street art? Because I, I think of Shepard Ferry and, and the hope, you know, that, that image and how that just, like, took off. Yeah. Uh, there's, there has been an evolution of respect for street artists, right? Right when I left New York in 2012, uh, my neighborhood blew up. My neighborhood, Bushwick, Brooklyn, became this mecca. 
And somehow people just started realizing like, wow, this graffiti is real, this street art or graffiti, because they're kind of two different things. This, people really liked it. And it can bring money, I think. Kind of there's this money aspect. And Art Basel started popping off in Miami, which was really kind of this street art place where you could go, you would go to Art Basel and you walk down the street and you just run into artists left and right. And not a lot of people knew about it. Now, this is about 10 years later, now it's like this big like uh, frat festival. <laughs> you know, it's like, and now it's just like a whole different ideas controlled by money. Um, so yeah, I, I think somehow people really started appreciating this artwork, you know, I, and understanding the value of like, why I have a gray wall when we can have a wall that's painted by a muralist? And it will help bring people to a community. There's a appreciation. It's taken about maybe 30, 40 years to get to this level where it's like, it's like all over everywhere, you know, people want it. People want it in their house, people want it in their restaurants, people want it in their museum and on the cars, on cups, on bowls, you know, it's on clothes, you know. He came by, gave me a couple sketches, I really liked the sketch and just basically told him, do your thing. I really loved the, the lines and how everything came out. Something more with our culture, something more Aztec, Mexican, uh, something where you can look at the truck and know where it's from and you know what we do. And everybody that comes, oh, is this a Mexican truck? Like they see the, the pyramids, they see the little uh, designs up there and the Aztec dog and all that, and they really love it. Everybody that's come up to the truck, they take pictures with it and they, they love how it looks. The U.S. Capitol has nearly 150 murals scattered throughout 72 neighborhoods around the city. That's according to the Murals DC Project, a program that aims to curb the stigma of graffiti and where Maz Paz is a contributing artist. I look at this and a couple things come to mind. It's amazing, but it also is enormous and I think, wow, this must have been a lot of work. And you are under time pressure too. Talk yeah. to us about it. It's 175 feet by like 30, 30 feet. The biggest wall I have painted in D.C. and I think one of the biggest murals, maybe one of the biggest murals in D.C. Uh, but yeah. D.C. has a lot of murals, don't they? Yeah, I mean, they talk to us murals. about it as a place for an artist to like really kind of do your magic. Um, so I feel like bringing murals to D.C. is kind of new. Uh, they didn't really used to have so many murals, so now and they have this Murals DC program, and that's who gave me the funding to do this project. So there are a lot more murals coming up, and more people are uh, more open to artwork in their restaurant or in their house. I think just every day there's more uh, need for street art and murals and graffiti and art. COVID, uh, how did it change your life? And I also want to get into the fact that you offered classes because mental health is a piece of COVID we don't think about, but it's crucial, isn't it? I actually lost three friends. So mental health is very huge going on and um, people don't think about it. They say like mental health is like the pandemic of health in the United States. We did over about seven free classes during like uh, 2020, um, which was a beautiful way to just share my artwork and kind of like talk to people and be in communication with others while the whole like quarantine was going on. Um, it was really nice for me to just be able to share and like, and just, just, just even interact with friends and family that would go online and and talk back as I was doing these drawings. Mental health has always played an important role in his life. He's a native of Colombia. He left the South American nation at an early age. Your art is fascinating, but your life is fascinating. Your journey uh, to sitting here, 
I guess, you know, the fact that you were adopted, uh, your life could have gone in an entirely different direction. Do you think about that at all or? Uh, every day, yeah. Um, so I, uh, I was adopted from Bogota, from an orphanage in Bogota called La Casa de la Madre y el Niño, which means the house of the mother and the child. And um, <clears throat> I pretty much were, I was, I was taken away from my family at two days old when I was born. Um, I was born with a cleft lip and palate, and my parents, my mother, didn't even know how to feed me. So they took me to the hospital, and um, the doctors was like, <clears throat> they said to leave, leave, like, leave Federico here for, for seven days. When my family came back, my mother, father, uh, they told them that, that they didn't have the ability to take care of me, that they had to keep me. So my parents, they didn't plan for that, you know? Um, <clears throat> so I was taken and eventually put into like the, an, or an orphanage uh, a few months later and I was adopted by a lady here in Washington, D.C. and when I was a year old. And so I grew up here in Washington, D.C. And, um, and I just recently reconnected with my family, my biological family, three, about almost three years ago. So my life has been like, it's a huge, huge, just like every day is a new, a new learning experience. There's that uh, crazy dynamic for any child who's adopted. Uh, there's the, the family that comes in and rescues you and raises you. But there's always that yearning to find out, you know, who am I and who are these people? And yet you don't want to offend the family that adopted you because, so talk to us about that because it really, you do have to navigate that, don't you? Yeah, that is huge. Um, <clears throat> it's almost knowing you're a wolf, but you're grown up, you were raised by bears, you know? And you don't feel right, <laughs> like in your environment. Things never really felt right. For me, growing up, as much as my family was very open to me, like Federico, you're from Colombia, you're from Bogota, you're from this orphanage. I've gone down to my orphanage. I've painted a mural in my orphanage. I've worked with youth in my orphanage. I've like raised, I've done an art show to raise money for my orphanage. Uh, I used to go visit all the time. So I know where I come from as far as that standpoint. I've known that for very long. <clears throat> but um, just being uh, raised in a different culture than what your blood culture is, People don't think that that has uh, any effect, but it's a, it's, a big, it's a big effect. You're gonna have a lot of effect. Imagine you walk into a house in Colombia and somebody comes up to you and says, hey, you know, I'm your mother. Somebody says, hey, I'm your father and I'm your brother. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> this is kind of weird, you know? But it's really beautiful. I've been gone for, whew, 37 years, you know? And my mother has pretty much been waiting for me. I mean, she's, I think she's very affected by, she's very affected by me leaving. Let me ask one final question. Uh, what does your adoptive mother think that she could actually fly to other parts of the world and go and see your artwork uh, adorning buildings now? I mean, uh, she must be very, very proud. My mother is part Canadian. And in Canada, there's this company called Roots Canada, and it's like a clothing company. And it's very popular. And my mom is very familiar with Roots. So about maybe like three or four years ago, Roots contacted me <clears throat> to do a project for them. And I did like the, the front of one of their stores. I did two storefronts, like one big mural for one storefront, another mural for another storefront. And, um, when my mom heard that I had done, that I was doing this project for Roots, she was really excited. She was very, she was like, wow, wow. Like, she kind of like let her guard down. She kind of like eased up. She's like, wow, okay, my son is doing this. That's great. And it's constantly, I've worked for National Geographic. I've worked for the Portrait Gallery. Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> I can't even really think about it. Uh, I'm working to hopefully paint this mural in National Geographic um, in sometime soon when they reopen. 
So I've done all these projects now, and she, she has a lot more faith in me. Well, we have faith in you as well. Thanks so much. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. Much appreciated.